Suck mowing. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Majin, and welcome back to Film Slobs, the objectively best podcast about Me? anything ever. Shut up. <laughs> uh, with me, as always, is my good buddy, my boy, Tangelo. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> and dead, right? Yeah. Both. Especially and, dead. And also with us today, special guest possible, permanent member, Lex. <laughs> You're going to get me health care soon, right? No. So, yes, son. Of course. Of course. Oh. I can't afford that. Only oh. only twenty more episodes of Film Slobs to go, son. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Straight pride. Also, uh, Guns will not be here for a little while. He's really busy in real life doing real life things. Yeah. He's watching My Rip Little Guns. Pony again. He's just watching yep. more My Little Pony. Yeah. Let him have his thing, okay? He's going. Door <laughs> He's reconnecting to, door to his and roots. Being like, hey, want to watch some ponies? <laughs> What he's doing. But he will be back eventually. And what we're doing is this. So this is the year 1973. That that's yes. what these movies are from. Yeah. So what do you guys want to talk about first? I I want, to, I want to talk about how you're a fucking idiot for not liking high school girls. All right. So I like I just got out of like Holy Mountain. I was just done got done watching that, and you were like, go watch this, and I was like, okay. So I load it up. I get 10 minutes in and I realize this is a meme movie and I'm supposed to like watch it ironically. No, it was, was not like, a meme movie. It is a meme, meme movie. It no, is it isn't. It's a meme. pick movie. It is a fuck it's a it's a dorky it's a it's a dorky fucking goofy ass Japanese movie. And it's then I was fucking sick, dude. What the I I do I, not understand how you came to that conclusion from the first I 10 minutes. Got to, I can, literally got 10 minutes in and I was Yeah, well, okay, was so you like, watched no. so you watched a girl jump off the top of the school, pushed off by, you know, the all-powerful student council and you're like, "Oh, this is a meme movie. This isn't it like It is a meme movie." No, it isn't. <laughs> Stop saying things that just aren't like, true. It's it is true. <laughs> I was like, man, haha, this is goofy. Uh, I'm not really in the mood for it for what a goofy ass movie. I mean, that's one thing. It's, it's not a mean movie though. God, well, that's, what, that's what I meant. It's a pink movie. It, it, it's a a, a style movie. of Japanese movie that got really popular in the 60s and 70s, and then you know died off. And I don't expect to come back because now we have the internet. But like, it, it's it's it was a thing. It was a thing for a long time. Yeah, when I say it was, when I say it's a meme movie, I don't literally mean like mimetic. I mean like you know. You mean it's, like it's, something it's you're like not like supposed a... to take seriously. Yes, and I and I, I, and I was like, eh, I'm not really in the mood. I'm not in the mood. You can take it seriously though. I mean, I can. But... Those girls are fucking maniacal, dude. They drained a girl's blood from her tits and made her fucking watch as it filled you, up. All right, you repeat that sentence back to me and then tell me again, I'm supposed to take this movie seriously. Okay, well, there's They're the other evil. scene. Okay, where well, there's the other scene where the good guys trap the uh, the school's, like, board of directors into having sex with them and taking pictures so they can blackmail the uh, chairman and uh, get him ousted and take down the school, too. You know? Yeah. It gets into a whole bunch of stuff about, like, power dynamics between the... Uh, a teenage girl, you know, platonically defined in Japanese culture versus the man uh, of uh, who's put in charge of them, you know, who has to control them and make sure they grow up and be good people. But the system that they're put into to make them good people is just, you know, killing them. It's a very fine. serious movie. <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't get that far, so. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you would have liked it. I'm pretty sure. I, I think you should definitely watch like the last. Uh, I, I don't know how long it was, but like. I mean, I'll I'll give it another shot sometime. I just really yeah. was not in the mood for that but kind like, of movie. Yeah, I, I get it. After uh, watching okay, whatever happened in, in you get I was, to keep your balls. I was like, man, I just want to go play Jack and Dex. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't get to play anything. You get to do this podcast. It's more important than video games. Yeah, if it was, if video were more important than the podcast, then the podcast would be about video. It can, it can be about video. Welcome to video yeah. game slobs, <laughs> Welcome to Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. <laughs> the best game. Film slobs oh, is canceled. So the the uh, the movie's actually called the Terrifying Girls High School Lynch Law Classroom. It's not just called the High School Girls. And it's about the student council and how they're all evil. Like, literally, they kill people. And the principal and all like the people in power at the school are in league with the cops 
and they do corrupt shit, and they're all evil bad people. You know, I actually have literally stopped. never heard of any of these games released in 1973, except Dungeons and Dragons, but it wasn't actually released then. <laughs> nice. Oh. But there is a game called Anti-Monopoly that I've never heard of before. Ooh, I, I, I want to play it now. It's, it's a just, deconstruction it's on the name. of Monopoly by Gear <laughs> yeah, Nobuchi. So. <laughs> you beat the game and then it says, this is not a game, zoom back camera. We'll get there. Yeah, All right. we'll get there. Yeah, I thought uh, High School Girls was a was a fun movie. Yeah, it like I mean, not all of it worked for me. Um, I, I guess yeah. partially because of you know American and therefore a prude on certain things. But uh, when it wasn't just being you know gratuitous for its own sake, it was actually really interesting. Especially like the scene where one of the main characters got tortured with those electrodes, you know, instead of the other girl, like. Yeah. Uh, again, the power at play there and, and choosing the girl, for themselves. The girl who, by the way, was nicknamed the boss with the cross. Yes. Which is the coolest <laughs> yes. I've ever heard. Because uh, that's part of the uh, the premise is that these three girls get transferred here because they're all juvenile delinquents. They're delinquents, and, yeah. Yeah, and it turns out that one of them is a fucking you know mob boss who <laughs> who is challenged like. They, they, they do a whole like yakuza fucking scene or, well not, not probably not what that puts in your mind when i say yakuza but where she's challenged by a person out of town and that person joins them and it's great it's great uh i don't know i i i couldn't really tell you very much about the characters other than that though because they uh it's, were, it's they were too complicated yeah but i did dig it and i feel like just saying that it was cool that it talked about those things is kind of my opinion it was good. And also it's there were just, lesbians. So, oh yeah, points. Oh yeah, lesbians was a thing. And uh, the the guys are all fucking idiots. They're so fucking dumb. Like the, like the principal or whatever, he's all like, oh shit, they've like blackmailed us. We have to fucking, hold on, I'm gonna actually, I have to open up the, I'm gonna watch the movie right now live on the podcast. Oh yeah? Because I, I, I forget that scene exactly. I need to fucking... Oh, no, no, no. I remember that. It was because, like, the uh, the fucking chairman, who was, like, the mayor or something, he was going to visit, and they were worried that he was going to find out about them fucking the girls. But then he also fucked the girls. So I don't know what he was worried about. Yeah. I feel like in that sense it was kind of a meme movie because you weren't supposed to, like, overanalyze it because at the end of the day it was, you know porn but it's not, it's not good porn. in in the larger sense in the important sense it definitely was I not i did not get off to this it, yeah it, it was not <laughs> it a was movie to get off action tense like they're fucking oh my god these girls like so obviously they, they start off the movie draining this girl's blood into a vial and making her watch as it fills up and saying you're gonna die when it gets to this point and then she jumps off the fucking roof and then later somebody like tries to do something to them and they're like no and they catch her, and to torture her, they make her drink a fuck ton of water. Oh, and they yes. they all sit around her in class so she can't run to the bathroom. For at least, like, to... a day, it yeah. was implied. It's like, it's fucking maniacal. How can you do that? <laughs> Why would you How... post this? Why would you think of this? <laughs> like, I don't even care about the fucking electrocuting of genitals and the draining of blood. It's like, having to hold your piss in for a whole day, that's the worst. And then the scene where, like, obviously she, you know, pisses. Uh, it's just a fountain of water. Just, just a fucking fire hydrant on the ground uh, to her feet. I felt so bad for her. It was it was very emotional. I felt genuinely, like, worse for her than anyone who got, like, actually killed. Like, I, did, I couldn't feel too bad for the boss with the cross because, like, she's a huge badass and she didn't really care about it. Like, she just took it. Because she, she... It was her idea. Because they were going to... Yeah, like you said, I think... That she took it for someone else. She had like cross tattoos on her thigh and shit. She was she was cool. Yeah, good movie. Good move, fun time. I give it like three stars. Out of five. I give it. I give it light seven. It was I, I I solidly enjoyed it. It wasn't my top one of the year though. No, of course not. So, do you guys want to talk about? You want to talk about Holy Mountain, or should we? I or mean, should we wait? It probably. I don't know. We've already kind of mentioned it, so you should uh, talk about it. Okay. Uh, I wanted to give my 
See, I, I went I went into this movie thinking that it was going to be like super obtuse and I wasn't going to get it at all. But actually, it was like the opposite. And I actually and it kind of like it kind of beat me over the head with the point. And I, and I, and I think I mostly got what it was what it was laying down. So I, th- I like the whole movie just kind of expresses this huge fucking disgust with like humans and their treatment of culture and their like materialism and shit like that. Like, so there's this there's this. And it has like it's basically like the whole movie. It's almost like a political cartoon. It's so on the nose. Like uh, there was a scene where you look at these merchants and it says Christ for sale, and like you know, like and, and like you know, there's there's these like mass produced Jesus figures are like everywhere, or or like there's a, there's a hilarious fucking scene where like they're going through like these lists of people like showing their lives and stuff. He's like, he's like, uh, yes, this is my art factory. Uh, I make a new art every season. And then like it cuts to, and like, you know, this is, this is my art for the season. It's just like a, a line of people like squishing their ass onto a piece of paper <laughs> or like, uh, or like there's a scene, there's a scene where like he, he makes this guy gold. Right. And how it turns out the whole time, how gold, how the gold of that world is made is that like you, they they you take shit like human feces and you just like put it through some kind of machine and it makes it into gold so it's like oh you know essentially this currency is it's shit it's literal human shit that's that's what you've been using and i and like it it goes through all this it's like 2 hours of just on the nose symbolism like this like it's like a long fucking political cartoon and in the end it kind of like uh, they do this thing at the end where, where like they get to the top of the holy mountain, what they were trying to do the whole movie, and the guy goes, "Oh, uh, we're in a movie. We're, we have to escape the movie and be real boys, and that's the ending." <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, do you watch Gridman, Leth? No. Majin. Uh, n- no. It's kind of like saw, like half of it. So. It's it's like there at the end of Gridman. There's this scene where like. No, I don't want to know the end of Gridman. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, yeah, don't worry about it. Anyway. It's not about you. It's about our loyal film slobs listeners. I hate film slobs fans. They're the worst. I agree. <laughs> Fuck you if you listen to this podcast. All six of them. I'm sure there's more people in Ohio Nation who care about us. I think I think Wada listens. I'm not sure yeah. though. Fuck you, Wada. <laughs> Wada's just listening because he wants to talk about uh fucking Dead Poet Society when we get to the nineties. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's gonna be on that episode just for that movie, and then he'll leave. But yeah, that's basically my ramble about this movie. What did you think, Majin? I thought, I thought nothing because there's <laughs> yeah. too much. I just my brain could not handle it. See, I, I, I feel like people say like they don't get it, and like there's so much, but they're actually it, it was on it's the all nose. just it's yeah, it's all just making the same point, I think, or or more more or less the same broader the same broader point is just being made for two hours. Which is why, and and actually, I I actually think that it's to the movie's hindrance, uh, because I, I there was at some point where What's I was like, the point? Yeah, well, it's just it was just like I get it, you know. I fucking get it. Just, just go. I'm, I like, like they're just stating all the same shit over and over again. I mean, it's like, it's like attacking this broader idea from different angles. I get that, but what I don't know. It idea. was like, it, what? Oh, well, just like you know, attacking like materialism and like, uh, just attacking the way humans treat culture and shit like that, and how we're all kind of like fucking disgusting and and shitty and dumb. Yeah, that was a gross. Like there was this, uh, there was this, there was another scene I really liked, where um, there was like a dance and uh, like all these and all these people like like everyone that's dancing the all the couples are like one normal person and like a and like a soldier dressed out in like riot gear and like a gas mask and shit. And that's oh, you mean like three little kids in a trench coat? Yes. <laughs> yeah, and then there were two people playing like instruments. One of them had the Illuminati eye on their head, and the other had like Satan dress. Yeah, I mean, it's, like, just loaded with imagery, and it yeah. all looks cool. Uh, yeah, like the guy who was Jesus. Yeah, like, yeah, the main character is, like, literally... Is he the main character? I guess he's the main character. He's kind of the main character. Uh, oh, my God. Speaking of, uh, speaking of outfits, the fucking, like, outfits that they wear with, like, the big hat, that looks so fucking cool. Oh, I love that hat. It's, it's which, sick. Which hat? You know, the, you know the one, like, the one that, this, like, the sage wears, and, like, you know, then, then they all wear, like, brown ones of that. You know, remember? No. How do you not remember? Okay, hang there's, on. It's like literally, a lot of... it's literally on the cover. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah. 
like to him from the beginning of the movie. Yeah, yeah, with the big fucking hat that that they all yeah. wear. Yeah, it's fucking sick. Yeah, sick. It's like some Dark Souls uh, shit. I want to repurpose like that someday. The fucking the um. So they go through all these uh characters. Jodorowsky's in this movie once again, more like Chadorowski because he gets all these women naked for his movies all the time. <laughs> like everybody's fucking naked in this movie. It's like oh yeah, constantly. It's constant nudity. It's kind of like off-putting, which I suppose is the point. Yeah, maybe. I think but the whole anyway, mo- the whole movie. Or yeah, go ahead. I'll, I'll get into there's, that. There's a scene in in the introduction. Jodorowsky's talking to his disciple, which is the Jesus guy, and there's all these like styrofoam or whatever like cutouts of people and they go over like i'm this name and my planet is this and my business is i have secretaries that i fuck only during business hours (laughs) and and one of the ladies she makes weapons she has this fucking like rock and roll guitar that's also like a shotgun. Oh, that's that was so fucking funny. Fucking... I I have oh, we have weapons for for Jews, for Christians, and for Buddhists. <laughs> and the Christian <laughs> gun is just a gun with Jesus on it. <laughs> that fucking that guitar gun is sick, and I want one. The whole movie is filled with like ridiculous fucking weapons. Remember that yeah. gigantic fucking sword, or that, that like <laughs> fuck huge sword that he almost cuts the the master guy's head off with. Yeah, it's so silly. Or like the 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 police captain guy. He walks in with like this this fuck huge rifle that's obviously too big for him. Yeah, I think it was a metaphor. Oh, I mean obviously, but it was really funny for uh, big penis for guns. power and also my penis. Yeah, power. No one man should have all that penis. <laughs> there was a scene where uh, during those introduction scenes. Uh, they have this, one of the ladies has like this machine that predicts when wars will happen. And so they make toys to propagandize the children so that they'll go to war and kill people for the war. Yeah, like 15 years early. I was like, if you have a machine that can predict wars, why don't you just like stop the wars from happening? Well, that's no, well, that's like the point is that like they're obsessed with money and they're, and they're profiting off of it. So that, you know that that's why they do the war. Like, you know like there was a scene, there, there was that other scene with the architect, and he was like, uh, yeah, we built these people these homes, and then uh, I, that's when I realized I fucked up. We lost, we, we lost money by putting into all this heat and uh, air conditioning yeah, and electricity. He makes, them, he makes them literal coffins. Yeah, yeah. And there's like, like this little like, miniature of like, apartment buildings, but they're all coffins. Yeah, and he's just like, they're just going to go here and fucking damn. sleep, and that's it. Yeah. And then they had like the advertisement for it, and it was like, "Be a free man without a house. Get a get, <laughs> get a, a yeah. wife. Yeah, <laughs> none of those nagging women just work all the time. No, I said without a house, open. not a spouse. Well, yeah, no, it, that that was on the poster too. Was it? I only got a glimpse of it. I'm pretty sure. A lot of uh... symbolism. What symbolism. The f- what the fuck was up with that guy who like could face through matter? He was oh like, yeah, that I was could... the fucking that was the best part of the movie. <laughs> I like, I this... conquered the holy mountain horizontally. But horizontally, <laughs> yeah. It's like the whole because the movie has been fairly like you know as as abstract and weird as it is, it's been fairly like not too crazy. Like there would be nothing like teleporting through fucking rocks and shit. <laughs> And then this guy comes up, he's like, I can go through solid metal. And then he just runs up and touches the wall and That's teleports so through it. So fucking funny. <laughs> uh, I really like that scene in general. Like, they go through all these people that are like, oh, the holy mountain is my words. And it's the poetry and the, the birds. Yeah. The, I, I say a rose and it sprouts out of my hand and the bees come and feed on my poetry. Oh, um, shit. And then he gets like flies all over his head. <laughs> yeah. And then the woman's like, uh, what was it? Your words are poems are uh oh, shit. It's, I, I think she said uh, uh, R, you, she said our bees make honey oh, yeah, your RBs flies make, make shit yeah that was a good it's like damn boom roasted and then there's this other guy that's like uh fucking the all the holy mountains they're all just drugs and then yeah. he takes like a vial full of like pcp jelly beans <laughs> yeah it reminded me of the i think issue five of uh transmetropolitan where the guy goes to like this. Well, you've read Transmetropolitan? Like, yeah, a couple issues of it. Hell yeah. Yeah, that, that thing's fucking sick. There's like an issue where he goes and there's like a bunch of vendor, like stalls, like trying to sell you their religion. It's kind of like that. Yeah. 
Like, this is my, I'm, the holy mountain is my words. The holy mountain is drugs. The holy mountain is, I'm going to fucking face through the mountain, bro. <laughs> God, that guy. He's a hero. Uh, yeah, I love him. Well, this movie is fucking disgusting. It's full of, like, oh just my gross God, as so shit. Gross. And I think that's, like, kind of the point is, like, you're supposed to be like, yeah, look how fucking, look how fucking gross and vile humanity is, bro. It's so sick. And, like, the first shot, like, one of the opening scenes is just, like, the, the Jesus figure. He's, like, covered in flies, head to toe, and he's pissing himself everywhere. Yeah, and probably because like, he was drunk. Yeah. I'm pretty sure those were bottles with liquor around him. Maybe. Well, how much would you have to pay him? Uh, God, I don't to, know. Like, to put fucking flies all over him. There's that one guy who had tarantulas all over him. Yeah, well, tarantulas are cool, dude. They're, they're chill. Oh, no. Tarantulas are gross. Anyway, that fucking... But they're sick. Like, th- that scene no, where, like, they rip the fucking... You are literally objectively wrong. Tarantulas are sick. Suck my cock. <laughs> uh, that, that scene where they rip that fucking flower out of the Jesus guy's hand, and I was like, bleh, gross. Or the... Or the even like all, there was like all the scenes with Jesus were gross. They fucking like Jesus oh, they, is gross. Confirmed. Damn. <laughs> uh, they like they take this pig corpse and they have like this goo all in them that like forms the mold of him. And so like they they like scoop it out of this pig corpse and like put it all over. I'm like God, it's fucking disgusting. Yeah. Ugh. They also like fill him. They cover him in goop to like the casts out of him so they can have that shot of him like surrounded by the jesus cast yeah he's he's like, like oh god the they they mass produce jesus oh shit fuck also oh, no. fucking he goes up this tower and he goes through like a little tunnel into a room that's rainbows and he goes like to try and stab jodorowsky and then jodorowsky touches him in all the special like chakra places or whatever and makes him like in a trance and then they dig an octopus out of his neck like what the fuck was that? I don't know what the. Fu- I, I think maybe it was supposed to be like, because up until that point he would only communicate in like grunts and anger and like angry growls and shit, and so maybe it was like I don't know freeing him from some kind of human made parasite or something. Perhaps. I don't know some metaphor. I'm sure. It was really weird. Yeah. Um, among like all the other weird stuff. And he, weird and they had like stuff. that scene. There was also that scene where they're making the gold. And they have, like, this really close-up shot of, like, the boiling shit. All the poop and the <laughs> violin. Like, oh, yeah. man. Why you gotta honestly, do that? Honestly, it doesn't, like, phase me anymore. I'm just... I'm, I'm, it can't... I, I wasn't prepared for it. I was, like... I, I, was, <laughs> I, wasn't men- I wasn't mentally ready. I'm completely checked out of life. You wanna... Which is good. You wanna explore sh- that on because... the Film Slobs podcast? Your general malaise with life? <laughs> it's a malay yeah i'm pretty about, sure it's a condiment are you margin? talking about malay for the, the nintendo gamecube no i was talking about malay the city where is that i don't even know <laughs> oh that's a weird condiment condom fuck <laughs> fuck condoms uh holy mountain is a i don't know strong seven light eight i like this it was cool something. sick I give it a recommendation out of numbers. Yeah, you should definitely watch it. This is going to make you offended and grossed out and weirded out, but fuck it. Oh, did any? Did either of you watch Topo? El Topo? Yeah. Majin watched El yeah. Topo. I did not. Yeah. How do you think it stacked I, up to that? Because that was his last movie before this. Uh, I don't know. It's like better in some ways and in others, like not like again it's really on the nose with the symbolism and it's like hits you over the head with the point over and over el topo's more like just sort of not like that and also it's more fun okay um all right what do you want to do next uh i want to do cocaine uh how about let's, let's talk about something you watched slut that we didn't watch how, yeah, how so, do you, yeah, how'd you think about you have a ton of shit that none of us eh, not a ton of shit yet. um most of the movies I watched were, I didn't really intend it this way, but I guess it was just what I was feeling. But uh, most of them are uh, black liberation movies in certain ways. Uh, you know, Descendants wow. of uh, Sweet Sweetback. You only watch black movies? How progressive? Eh. I mean, it, it, it was hit and miss. L- let's just be real. Because, like, one of them I watched. I never miss. <laughs> God damn it. I, I fucking hate my life. God damn it. I can't not think that. <laughs> anyway. The phrase is ruined forever. Fucker. 
<laughs> one of them I watched as like a sequel to Black Yellow was one called Blackenstein. And it That's was shit. No, it wasn't a sequel. Like in terms of film slops, I watched it in connection with that. Uh, it was just shitty. Like, uh, I mean, I don't think I've ever actually watched a uh, Frankenstein movie, at least in terms of the classic era. I watched the one that was written by Max Landis a while ago. It was crap too. But uh, it's just really plotting. It spends a lot of time on just him walking around and being black and the only interesting thing about it was that he the the reason for him becoming a zombie was his injuries sustained in Vietnam. So it was definitely some shades of, you know, going to fight the white man's war and uh, coming back broken. But if I was to recommend one, I'd definitely recommend Coffee, which I told y'all you should watch, but you didn't <laughs> listen. Uh, this doesn't matter. Which, uh, God, I, I, forget, I forget her name. Uh, Pam Greer, I think. Yeah, Pam Greer. Uh, the the woman who who uh, God, what was that movie called? But anyway, she she's famous for doing these kinds of movies, and it's a movie about uh, her sister uh, dies or 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 becomes addicted to drugs, and so she decides to single handedly you know take out the fucking drug lords, and she like the movie opens with her seducing a drug lord, getting into his house, then shooting him in the, in the fucking face with a shotgun, and then uh, and then. Uh, there, there's two guys there because of reasons and she walks up to the other guy in the bathroom forces him to take his own supply and fucking die that way to frame it as like a, a junkie gone wrong and the movie just gets better from there so right. it was quite good but I'm not going to belabor the point because uh, it, it wouldn't be much of a discussion so coffee y'all should watch coffee I don't like coffee I hate oh, coffee too but it's, it's coffee with a Y so it's different coffee with a E and another E uh, how about? Oh yeah, what, what'd you give it? Oh, coffee, eight out of ten. Yeah. It was, it was, nice. it was, it was the best movie I'd watched this year. But uh, I, I also watched it a while ago, so I, I wouldn't have the best thoughts, to be honest. Yeah, this movie was like, or this movie, this year was like weirdly consistent, but like, like nothing like particularly stood out. But mm -hmm. nothing was like, I don't, I don't think I watched anything bad. I definitely watched some nothing, bad things. Nothing like but Holy Mountain didn't stick out. Well, I mean, in terms of quality, like I, I liked Holy Mountain, but it wasn't my, it wasn't even my movie of the year. I thought it was yeah, pretty neither. great, but I had that same thing. Like all the movies were relatively the same. Like I don't, this, the difference in the scores that I gave it was like very low, very shallow. So like, I'm pretty sure every score I gave was like a seven or an eight. Yeah. Except terrifying high school year. girl, which is a one out of ten, baby. You didn't even finish <laughs> ah, it. No, no. Suck my wang. Uh, let's talk about Fantastic Planet. How'd you feel about Fantastic Planet? Yeah. Like? Well, I just watched that today, so I have more fresh thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um. Fresh. All right. So I thought Certified. like, I it was like I was kind of disappointed. It was it, like it had really great art artwork, of course, but like the way they animated all the humans is like, what the fuck were they doing? They all walked around like like weird, gangly, I don't know. They look fucking unnatural, and I think like it was the fine to me. It was I like, thought it was rotoscoped, so like probably was more. Was it more rotoscoped? They, they looked like they looked like they ran like unnaturally, like it was uncom like they looked really uncomfortable. I don't know. I, like I, I wasn't really judging it on that because it's 1973, and I I yeah, feel like yeah, we shouldn't. But it was just like it stuck out. It stuck out to me particularly. They're also like tiny, and they reproduce in like a week. As opposed well, to... they're not all right. No, the humans aren't tiny. The 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 aliens are big. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, the, yeah. The um, alien planet. The rules are different. Maybe. Maybe it's gravity. I think. I, I think like the point of the movie was simultaneously that humans are disgusting cockroaches and <laughs> and like and, and and parasites, but also that we're terrifying and kind of cool. I don't know. Sure. What? Why do you say that? Because I have kind of the opposite opinion. Well, not not necessarily opposite, but. Uh... I, I well, think we I think we like, read the symbols in different ways. Uh, just because, like you know, the whole the whole movie is about how like oh man we're so fucking like spooky and scary, you know? We're like like it's it's all about like you know like they're just kind of like oppressing us and like even in this and even in this like this dire situation we manage to like build this underground society and we rise up and like just fucking like obliterate these aliens before they even know what the fuck's hitting them like and that's makes us spooky, scary. 
people. <laughs> it was their fault. I'm bad. I'm bad at articulation. Test. Don't bully me. <laughs> no bully. It's okay. I, yeah, okay. I, I can I can see where you're coming from on that. Um, especially about us, like, you know, being cockroaches. However, I thought that we weren't the Oms at all, which are the characters who look like humans. I thought we were more like the, uh, the drags, the big blue alien boys. Really? Um, yes, because... I mean, this this is partly because I've been reading environmentalist stuff like uh, The Sea Around Us by Rachel Carson, which is a fucking beautiful book. And, like, I I just read that book. It's so good. Anyway, um, but... Uh, Whispered it so you know it's really good. It was so good. Uh, what is the major difference between the uh, Oms and the Drags? The Drags are educated and they're super advanced and they think that the Oms are pests who... Uh, who don't amount to anything will never, you know, contribute to their society. See, and so the major difference is their size. Well, yes, that is also a thing, but, <laughs> um, the drags, uh, just completely discount, discount the arms. And I think that's, you know, our relationship with the environment. We think that the environment is just there to, you know, be conquered by us to impede our path as we, you know, pr produce our, you know, buildings and civilizations. But, it has its own life, all its own, that is profoundly interactive with us. Like one of the things in the book I mentioned, uh, the Sea Around Us, it mentioned that there were plans to dig a trench to alter the Gulf Stream water from the song to bring it closer to the coast to make our winters warmer. And if we'd done that, it would have been catastrophic, you know? And, and, and that's, you know, on top of like climate change and everything else. But like. Wait, so how does that pertain? Because they're assuming that the alms are there to be subjugated, to be pets, to, you know, they don't, they don't matter. They, they don't have their own culture, but, And then it comes know, back to fuck them. Yeah. And it, it comes back to fuck them because, you know, they start, one of the drags gets killed and the whole, well, it, the twist of the movie is that on the one moon that orbits this world, that is where the drags do their mating ritual with uh, people from other worlds where they, you know, meditate and send their consciousness to these statues and they fuck, by which I mean dance. Oh, uh, sick. It was metal. And, you know, destroying that, I, I guess it's implied that it, you know, it ruins a part of their culture and, uh, it, you know, makes it harder for them to mate, which forces well, them. Well, I think it's like, I think, it, I, I thought it was that like they literally power their bodies by doing this is, is what it seemed like. I think that's true. But I, I thought they specifically mentioned that it was it was fucking too. No, oh, yeah, that too. Like I think well, it, was it was both dancing. Yeah, I think they literally die if they don't if they don't do this. I'm not uh, sure though. Yeah, that, that that could be true too. Like the point is that it's important to their culture and it's something that they uh, yeah. rely on. And their disregard for this other form of intelligent life, you know, just because it's different than them, just because it's smaller than them, destroyed them. And I I feel like that's what we're doing right now with our disregard for the planet and uh I, specifically i would I, I think that the solution in this movie was correct because you know we, we cannot continue living the way that we are right now and we, we have to make changes if we're you know going to survive and in this movie they they made peace with the om and they uh, uh, made their own second moon and everything uh, and re recognized them as something that is uh, another species of life that lives in concert with them and I, I feel like as you know hippy dippy as it sounds today if we don't do that or if we don't do some something like that we're all gonna fucking die uh so that's a very valid uh interpretation of the movie and you know i could see where you're coming from but personally i've i read it as like you know it's, it's the human spirit and our ability to adapt and rise up and you know conquer shit and be fucking badass and cool and both the uh the beauty and fear that 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 instills simultaneously yeah i, I mean yeah i think both are valid because you know ultimately anything in any story represents you know us uh so if you read the alms as people that's valid too and uh I mean, I guess I'm also really cynical about bureaucracy and basically everything that was with the with the drags was bureaucracy. So that's why I, I think they were more human than the alms in, in it. But right. we'll work. Yeah. So hilariously, you remember when like, so they had like those those machines that did like the mass ohm extermination. And it was like they just launched a bunch of pucks everywhere that released gas. 
Mm-hmm. And then, like, they were like, okay, we, we got it. We got a new fucking way to get rid of these arms, and we're going to we're gonna fuck their shit up. And, like, I was just thinking, like, that, that one, like, mini society defended against that so easily, but I don't think they would do so hot against those, like, pucks from before. Like, I, I feel like they downgraded their system there. Yeah, I, 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 I do think they kind of got that backwards yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, probably. All the more reason that they're actually uh, metaphors for humans because they <laughs> fucked it up. <laughs> they did <laughs> fucking stupid and went backwards. Yeah, that perfect. Because they have the, they they have those lights. They put out like spotlights, and then every, if you walk on the spotlight, you die instantly, basically. Yeah. So why not just do that to the whole planet? Uh, well, then I maybe. It, I, I mean, it, it wasn't really put out in the rules of the movie itself, but I assume because yeah. it's poison that you know it might it might affect the drags too. Like they're really just you know wanting to just to. It's like, bro, if you want to get rid of all the rats, just douse your entire house in rat poison. What the hell? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, it's their house. You said the planet. Uh, just uh, well, not the residents, just everywhere else. Uh, I gave Fantastic Planet like a seven. Same. Yeah, it's very, very, very it's, acceptable movie. It was good. I like the art a lot. Really the art cool. was really fucking cool. In in motion, it wasn't always fantastic, but man, those fucking like a lot of them still shots are gorgeous. It's, it's yeah, like I agree. Film. The it's environment cool. was the environment was so biopunk. It was cool. Biopunk. Fucking biopunk. I haven't heard punk. that term before. Uh, it's bio, but punk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Punk ass bitch. <laughs> You want to tell us about uh? I want to hear about Mazinger Z versus Devil Man. Tell us about. Tell me about that. Well, when I watched it, I had not seen either Mazinger Z or Devil Man. Rip. It it kind of went over my head from that. It it was okay. Like it it was, uh, it wasn't really the best crossover because it it didn't really show them interacting all that much. I I came away. My my big question was in this movie, Mazinger Z overcomes his uh, weakness to you know not being able to fly by getting wings, and I wonder if that became part of the the mythos of Mazinger Z that traced back to this random ass crossover. I, I you know I, I I'm pretty sure Mazinger Z has wings normally, doesn't he? That's maybe I I I'm pretty sure in the art I usually see if him he does. I mean he he has the wings in the cover, but in the movie he got them so. I always like when, you know, crossovers do that and they have permanent consequences, but it, it just huh. kind of made me tilt my head. Yeah, um, if, you, if you Google Mazinger Z, all the, all the images, he has wings. Yeah, it, it, was, Interesting. It, was something, it was something like that. But uh, They always read that title wrong. Uh, oh, oh, you mean like Majinger Z? Because you're a narcissist? Not at all. Mm-hmm. Majinger Z weeaboo here. Uh, <laughs> I like Kuta Lollies. The most interesting thing about it was, like, this one scene that wasn't even really a scene, per se, but, like, they're on motorcycles, and they, they like, jump off a cliff, and they end up doing, like, the spin in the air where, like, w- their motorcycles are, like, bottom to bottom, and they spin in the air, and it was fucking metal because it's going to guy. But <laughs> other than that, it, it was like pretty... It sounds like something of... off a devil may cry. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, but because of that, I did end up watching uh, Devil Man Crybaby and reading the original manga for Devil Man, and those were both oh, hell great. Yeah. Those were both great. Yeah. Love me some Crybaby. So what'd you give it? I don't even remember what I gave it. It was uh, six. Yeah. Hmm. I liked it more than I didn't. Uh, who here watched Wicker Man? Me. Yeah. Tell me about Wicker Man. Uh. Were there bees? <laughs> yes. Wait, no. No, they were not. Wicker Man was pretty good. Very, uh, spooky. Like, actually so spooky? Just, just, no, not spooky. Did you watch it? Did anyone watch it? I, I meant to. I didn't I didn't get around to oh, it, though. Oh, shit. I'm the only one. I have all this weight on my shoulders now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, oh, much, so much so power. So much power. <laughs> uh... It was really cool movie about this guy going on a on an island that's really creepy and weird, and everybody there acts kind of off. And there's like you get this sense that something's fucky here, right? And then he goes through this whole movie like discovering like all like the the lore about like what's going on there. They talk about like sacrifice people for the crops, and it's just kind of it's like off putting. And weird, and uh, 
the ending is pretty like it's pretty scary too. Were there bees? Like, no, they were not bees. I feel like he's. I feel That's like the only saying, thing I know about this movie. Okay. I feel like he's only <laughs> saying there's no bees, so that when I watch it, I get scared by the bees. Exactly. Okay, yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm doing. No, not the bees. Uh, Christopher Lee is in this movie. <laughs> Christopher uh, Lee just shows uh, up in the randomest places. Fuck. He he was great in this movie because he's he's great in everything. Which I only have seen him in Lord of the Rings, but he's. Have you never seen Star Wars? What? He was in he was in two of the prequel movies. Oh yeah, yeah he was great in that too. As Who's... Count Dooku. Yes. Christopher Lee, he played um, Count Dooku in Star Wars. And, yeah. Uh, I was about to ask who's Christopher Lee, and you said Count Dooku. And I was like, oh. Yeah, Count and Dracula also, in Star Wars. Was, and also Star Wars. Count Dracula. In Lord of the Rings. Yeah. There's, this film is, uh, I don't know. Oh, man, I'm freaking out. Count Dooku say. is whitewashed Blackula. Yeah, so like, <laughs> so you go, he start, the movie starts off, he gets to this island, and then people are acting like weird about he's he because he, he's there to investigate the disappearance of this little girl. He got this anonymous tip that there was a little girl missing and nobody knows who she is. And he's like, what the fuck is happening? And everybody's acting kind of weird. And it's, you know, it's a slow, like, crawl, like it ramps up towards the end, like in terms of how creepy and weird it is, because it starts off. Everyone's just being kind of like dismissive of him. And not saying anything, and just being tough, and he's really frustrated with it. And the, he gets to see all their like weird activities. Like, there's this one girl who's like she, li- I think, lives at the uh, the hotel, and like the bar gets into like this bar song singing about how she's great because she's a whore and she fucks everyone, and she's really good at fucking people. And then they try to get him to fuck her, and he doesn't. Because he's a virgin. He's waiting till marriage. Because he's a good Christian boy. And all this island is pagans. And they're bad. And uh, he gets to see all like these weird like rituals that they do. Like they have this pole where they spin around with like flyers and shit around it. Like singing a song about sex. And then there's a kid. And then the kid goes up and then dies. And it goes back into the earth. And then there's a tree. And the tree makes a fruit. And then the fruit comes down and somebody eats the fruit and that's a person and they fuck another person and whatever. And it's all very, like, very sexual. And it's really weird. And honestly, I think, because the whole thing's like, it's all religious, right? It's, it's a religious, like, cult thing, basically. Yeah. And if not for that aspect, I think, honestly, like, we shouldn't be so repressed sexually. Like, we should be letting our children know about that shit because it's really important. And it's, like, a basic human drive thing it's like you're gonna fuck eventually unless you like are a loser like me uh haha nobody laughed fuck you. <laughs> i mean we laugh. were we were concerned Nervous okay laugh. <laughs> uh but yeah no it's like i think we should be teaching that kind of stuff just not with like the whole like sacrificing people stuff sure I mean, yeah. No, I, I mean, think we should we just should have just... He- home ec and health class just like kill half the students, whatever. Yeah. They're expendable. It's a very cool. Uh, and there's a naked girl dancing at one point. That's cool. And uh, it's it's a really good ending. And that is Great. my thesis on revitalizing sex ed. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely get people to wake up. I really, Wake I really wish, up, I really, people. I really wish like one of you had watched it so we could say more about it. I kind of wish I had, too. I, I wish I'd watched The Exorcist, too. I, I fucked up. I, didn't, <sighs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I slacked but, on my horror. If you fuck left, I'm going to fucking kill you. Because I watched The Exorcist and didn't like it. Yeah. Oh, my God. You gave it one and a half stars on letterbox.com. Damn, no way. Uh, I, it, it's... I have to take a shit. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so he's gonna take a shit. Uh, okay. I rate Wicker Man a four stars. Did you watch uh the Left didn't watch the Sting, did he? No. No. Yeah, let's talk about the Sting. The <laughs> Sting. The Sting was the Sting was cool. I, it was one of those Pretty movies. Cool. It was one of those movies that like uh I think was almost entirely carried by the actors. Like the mm-hmm. like, it, like like it was like a creatively written movie, but like 
just the the acting sells it so heavily. Like imagine like that that fucking poker scene. That was like seriously that, one of my oh, th- when he got drunk. Oh, uh, uh, when, when he pretended to get drunk so that he would fool him. I'm sure yeah. Oh, we got all your money, bitch. <laughs> yeah, that was fucking yeah. awesome. Uh, that was a good scene. Yeah, the whole movie was the the whole movie was littered with like amazing performances. Like that moment when um when you know they're sitting waiting for like the five hundred thousand dollar bid to to you know happen, and and you know the guy sits down, and he's like he's like win. I told you to put him on in second place, and you know he like he's like this this is really subtle realization on um the bad dude's face when like he's he like, just oh, realized no. he fucked up. Like it's like like this little subtle thing he did with his eyes, and I was like, whoa, shit, that was cool. And like he fucking um uh, you know, and then he runs up runs up and starts like freaking out on the bars and stuff. Uh I thought the twist was like at the end, like the reveal at the end was a bit. Um... It was super predictable. I saw it coming a mile away. I didn't think it was predictable because I didn't think it was like set up. You think so? Happen. Well, like he, well he, when it was like when he gets arrested and brought to like the FBI and stuff. I was like, okay, so they're actors too, you know? Like, but I did kind of question that. I was like, are they actors though? I'm pretty sure. I'm, I, I'm, I thought I'm like, they were the actual FBI. I was like, I was like eighty percent <sighs> sure. I was like, shits fucking, like that um, make me glad it's, this isn't a terrifying girls high school. Haha, <laughs> 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 that's not. I also the peed. holy mountain told me you could make that into gold. <laughs> yeah, and then sell it to the corrupt policeman. Anyway, and get your, and get your holy shit. All right, wait. Can we? Go, I want to go back to the holy mountain for like just like a moment. Yeah, I wanna, okay. Uh, can we? All, can we all appreciate the line? Uh, your contribution has completed my hall of one thousand testicles. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that was a. Appreciated. That was a thing that I uh yes. Anyway, <laughs> so what was your wrong opinion about The Exorcist and how it was good? No, we're actually? talking about the sting. No. We're talking about the sting. Oh, okay. Uh, the sting. Yeah, I I don't know. I I saw this. I saw the twist coming like a mile away. It was like I was like eighty percent sure at least. But uh, I didn't know that guy was. I was like, wait, what? They were working for him the whole time. I did not see. I did. I did not see the twist where they um, were all acting. I thought they were all acting as if um, Hooker was actually going to turn them in, and he was like, he was looking regretful. But I guess he was just like selling to um, to the bad guy. But the bad guy, I don't think, was looking. Well, I think like the idea, because like the, in all the scenes, you see him like, and he's like, he's like, hey man, you ain't said much. What's wrong? He's like, oh, I'm just fucking. I got nerves, you know, but like, and you, and like, you're supposed to take that as like, oh, he's just, he's lying, you know, he, he just, he's just depressed about his buddy getting arrested by the FBI. But actually, it turns out he did have nerves. He, he was just, he just was pretty fucking nervous. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I don't know, I didn't buy it, but I mean, it's fine. Yeah. The performance is fine. It was not, but I think it's just me being bad. Uh, it was cool. Uh, it was a cool. I really like the setup at like the beginning where they have the the guy give up, go like with the money from the bookies to like take it uptown and then you get robbed. Oh yeah. And he's like, I was like, oh shit, that was a setup. What? Yeah, because I, I totally bought it. I would have totally gotten fucking punked by those guys. Oh yeah, dude, me too. Uh, what else did I have to say about this fucking movie? Oh yeah, this was this this won the uh this won the movie of the year award, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I watched it. And uh I would not give it movie of the year personally. I wouldn't give it movie of the year, but I don't blame them for it. It's it's not a bad pick. Yeah. It's definitely it's it's definitely an expected pick. You know, like this is something yeah. I would look at I was like, yeah, this is definitely something yeah. that's gonna win. It's got like a gimmick, if you could call it that, of when you start the film it sets up like the actors. Or like the players, it's like it's the credit roll, but it's set up as like this title card that says the players, and then it goes through all the people in the movie and says like their character and who's playing them, and then there's more title cards throughout the movie of like the setup and the sting and the, this and that thing, and uh, so it's got like sort of a, a quaint feel to it in that regard. Oh yeah. And also, it, ha- also it has that song. Um, yeah, I realized the 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 famous the yeah the famous piano thing like yeah I was like I was like oh hey there it is that's the thing yeah sick and it's also about like you know setups like doing these like these cons and so you're like constantly wondering like what are they gonna do now 
how are they going to get this guy? So, like, some information, like, I think the fact that I didn't predict the twist was, like, was what was supposed to happen. Yeah. Because I feel like if it if I had predicted it, it would have ruined, because I would have been like, oh, well, I, I know what's going to happen, so. Well, I, I, I felt I like I, I had a good time despite it. Uh, yeah, I had a good time. I, God damn it, I was just about to say something. Well, fuck it. Say uh, it. Say it. <laughs> uh, no, well, I, I forgot is my is my problem. Oh, just remember. Damn. Just remember it, dude. I, I forgot. I just have to do it. Well, to fill, to fill the space, because we mentioned the Oscars, I looked it up, and the thing that this Oscars is most famous for is a guy streaked across the stage on national television. No shit. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, Hell yeah. <laughs> with a peace He's sign like, and, and uh, God, what, what did the guy say? Uh uh, the host said, uh, "The only laugh that man will ever get in his life is by stripping off and showing his shortcomings." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good shit. Good one. He did it though. Roasted. He, he oh yeah, good God. boy. Now I remember what I was going to say. Um, the dialogue streaking solves movie, everything. The dialogue in this movie is hilarious because they just like go way overboard with like the twenties uh, and thirties dialectics. So, uh, yeah. so it's so it's like you know he like he kept calling like the police a dick, and I was like. I was like, "Oh, right, yeah, that's oh, right." Yeah. You know, <laughs> they're dicks, bro. Yeah, they're fucking dicks. Dick. Oh, ah, never mind. I was gonna go back to Holy Mountain again, but never. <laughs> just, just watch the movie. I don't. I'm not gonna. Expl- yeah, I don't have to explain every Mountain. fucking metaphor. Uh, yeah, I gave it like an eight. It was cool. Uh, yeah, just like a. What did I give it? I gave it a fucking three and a half stars. Three and a half. Okay, that's a seven. That's yeah. a seven. Speaking of which. The Exorcist deserves three and a half stars. But you gave it one and a half. Shut up. All right, let's talk about The Exorcist. <laughs> Exorcist. I don't know. Like, I wasn't spooked at all. I wasn't scared. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. Big boy. I, I get its reputation because at that time there weren't, like, you know, serious fucking horror movies yet and this kind of kicked that off where you know now we're just at the point where nothing where unless they're you know jumping out of the screen to just like fucking cut your arms off it's not scary anymore there wasn't really any jump scares though yeah which there were some well yeah there were a couple yeah uh but that wasn't like the main thing uh which which i did appreciate and that's about as much praise as i can really give it uh i don't understand what's like that's like a three out of ten like it's not that bad it was like I wouldn't even like, call it a bad movie. I mean, it, it had nothing, nothing to recommend it at all. Like it starts off in uh, this uh, scene in Iraq where the uh, uh, this priest northern guy. Northern Iraq. That's important. It's specifically in northern Iraq. They sure. Put it in text on the screen so you know it's important. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> I, by the way, speaking of that scene, I really like the shot where like they have the kid running through the like the maze. And then there's like a full a shot in front of him. He's running towards the camera, and then he turns to the left, and it pans and like shows the guy he's talking to through like underneath his legs, which I thought that was a cool shot. Okay, I don't remember it at all. Well, that's fine. That's... Is it though? Is it really that memorable? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. I remember it, bitch. <laughs> you remember it till you die because of this. Yeah. Yeah, it starts off there, and like that whole section could have just been cut because it, it it was it really only set up the like demon through kind of metaphor, and you know we don't even see that guy for another half of the movie again. Oh uh, yeah, it could have been cut down, but like it's it's important because it sets up that guy. I mean, it's just so padded, and half of the movie, like or, or like three fourths of the movie, is literally just discussing what's to be done about this child who you know yeah. is, is having these I things just, and then the last like a little bit before the end is the actual exorcist people die and then the, then it's over you know i do think it could have been shorter because i do i think like logically that they should have like this girl's fucked like her mom should have been like way like looking way more into psychiatry and shit like it should not have taken them almost all the way to the end of the movie to do an exorcism yeah like and another thing is that there's more than one exorcist so the title is a fucking lie because they like... go to the because they have like the psychiatrist <laughs> there oh, oh yeah there's well there, no it's yeah, a fucking lie don't even try to defend it yeah i wasn't trying to defend that mm-hmm. I was, uh no i wasn't i was talking about something else but I... sorry um, go, go yeah, ahead there's 
they so she originally goes to like this doctor who's like just give her ritalin bro and they come back they they take the doctors to her house and they see her possessed banging her fucking face on the pillow and like the bed bouncing and shit and they don't immediately go like uh yeah probably drugs aren't gonna do much for this this is out of my territory but uh i mean other than that it's fine i don't know it's it's, it's just one of those things where like is you know like what is good is good good things happening or is it the least bad things happening and for me at least in this case i I really just think like when nothing's happening and you know none of it's good it's just it's just a bad movie it, it, maybe it, it was very slow and bad. Although well, an, another thing, another thing I will praise yeah. is the uh, the woman who did the voice work for the demon in the girl was really good, and yeah. uh, the, the apparently all the, all the scenes with the girl were good. <laughs> the scenes at the beginning where she wasn't possessed, I thought I thought set up that nicely too. Like th- there are things that are good about this movie. That's why I didn't give it you know a lower score, but uh, just eh, eh. and. Uh, I I do appreciate that the Academy gave uh, the Exorcist its one Oscar for sound design because it it did deserve yeah. that. Yeah. Stick your cock over us. Yes, it was quite vulgar. That was that was that was more fun. Was, that was more funny to me than scary. Like, I felt bad for that little girl because they the demon possessed her and made her like like just stab herself in the cunt like fifty times with a with a cross. That's like that's fucked. Mm-hmm. This is bad. Rip little girl. Rip her coochie. Yeah. That's that's bad. I she's a girl. Like a little girl. That's that's illegal. Speaking of illegal little girls, uh, there was like in that like sex cult or whatever in Holy Mountain with all those girls that were <laughs> topless. There was a little girl in the group who was also naked, and then like a guy like made out with her hand. Well, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, as I we all know, that. little girls don't have the uh, having to cover up their nipples thing in American media. It's it's a thing. Was yeah. the Rubberman even American? I think, what was that no, I, film? Is, is that true now, though? I think in Porco Rosso, the American version, they cut out little girls having nips or something. Mm, I don't There's know. like giant raccoon testicles in that movie. Wait, no, that's that's Pompoco. Sorry. What? Okay. Uh, have you not seen Pompoco? No. Yeah, it's about environmentalism because it's because it's a good oh well then I might love it considering that. what I've talked yeah, about on this about, podcast. Like, these, these raccoons that are like, oh man, they keep building apartments on a mountain and tearing down the forests, and they have these giant testicles that they use to like bounce around and fly and shit or whatever. I, I can't remember that well. But... Okay, all right, all right, okay. It's a good movie. I'm glad you recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> all Ghibli movies are automatically recommended at birth. <laughs> Sure. But yeah, Exorcist was... Uh, it was okay. Uh, I couldn't find too much, like, bad about it. She should have just immediately... She should have called the cops or something. Fuck. She's moving shit with her mind. It, like, the, the scene that really just gets me, now that, now that I mentioned that, is... Uh, the point of the Exorcist is that he's having, like, a... Uh, or, or at least the younger exorcist is that he's having kind of a crisis of faith and uh yeah. you know he's he, yeah and he's uh debating whether or not to proceed with the exorcism because again that's the point of the movie i guess um and the motherfucker sits is sitting there talking to this kid and the kid opens a drawer with her fucking mind yeah. and he's like well do it again and then she's like nah but like she did though I mean, I guess she, he could have thought it was some fucking magic trick, but like, do you really also, do you really think this child yeah. is going to you know go through all this fucking thing doing magic tricks to torture her yeah. mom to the point where she's her mom is considering a fucking exorcism? I, I feel also, like that's ridiculous. Yeah, that is ridiculous. Also, she speaks in tongues like a, a scene or two right after the guy had said that speaking in tongues was a sign of like actual possession. So. Yeah, I, guess, like, I guess he just forgot. Yeah, he's shitty at his job. Yeah, should be excommunicated. But I would still recommend this movie. I guess just like because it's like iconic or whatever. Eh. 
I actually looking up the I looked up the you know highest rated movies from this year and you know I, ba- I barely know any of them. I know Paper Moon. Paper Moon is an excellent movie, and if I had watched it, I'd talk more about it. That I guess that's Paper I guess that's by Moon. default my uh, movie of the year. But the rest of them are just like movies I haven't seen and shit I've never heard of. And I feel like what we said before about how like this is just kind of you know a year is shockingly accurate. Yeah, it was a year. Nothing was like super crazy, but it was all fine. Like I didn't dislike anything that I watched, which was nice. So, uh, what'd you give it? Uh, I gave it three and a half stars. But I might amend that to a six now. Progress! Um, we'll get you down <laughs> to a three in, in no time. It's definitely gonna be a three. Or, a, uh, excuse me, a, uh, one and a half. Star? What is this? What is this star system mean? Why are we? Why are we going? Why aren't we doing one that? Because ten? letterbox. Fuck letterbox. I, I, I said six. I gave it a fucking six. That's what I said. Uh huh. Uh huh. Stars are cool. It's like Mario. Stars. Li- no, listen. This is a cold hard objective podcast, and we only deal with cold hard numbers, buddy. We don't well, do no. We don't a, do no good a, boy stars here. But there's a there's a there's a fraction in the star thing. There's three and a half stars. It's a half. It's numbers. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> oh jeez. What'd you think about Belladonna of Sadness left? It's been a while for both of us. I thought we've seen it, I'm sure, but Mm hmm. Uh didn't Majin watch it like this month though, I think. Yeah. Did you watch it this month, Tang? Uh no, I watched it like before. So I'm the only one who watched it. Yeah. Okay. Well, Belladonna of Sadness is an experimental anime where most of the movie is completely unanimated and uh, I, I think like not even very colored. It's, uh, it's, it w- it's like it's it's got very nice artwork though. Yeah. It, 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 it's 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 pretty, <laughs> but like I, nice. I feel like this is I don't know. I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself because uh, what watching. What? Oh, I was just looking through my notes for high school girls, and I just said piss. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. Awesome. Mm, so I I think Belladonna of Sadness is massively overrated. I did not get that much out of it. Like, I know the point of it. Is it supposed to be about female empowerment? And But, like, the way they go about portraying this, I don't is even, it? like... I don't even think it makes any sense. It's like she gets raped and somehow she's empowered through it. I mean, it's been a while, you know. Maybe, maybe my reading of the no, movie is she gets empowered because she's possessed by the fucking devil. She's not possessed though. She's just kind of like working with them, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, I, I felt the same, uh, really. Which that was a fucking that that rape was like really graphic. I mean, he asked, he made sure she said yes before he did it, though. So technically, it wasn't rape, but like, I'm like. Didn't if it? anybody, it was if was, she was anybody, coerced. exactly, like if anybody if else was... were around, like and you, you didn't stop that, you're a piece of shit. Is, is all I gotta yeah, say about well, that? It was like it's like if that had been a criminal confession, that would have been thrown out of court. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, um, like it, it, it was it was bad, but like, yeah, it, it's just, it's just a weird choice, and to have a woman be empowered by a rape, it's it's really weird. But I feel like that's partially because it was you know made by men. Uh, I think uh, Osamu Tezuka wasn't actually involved in the production, but he was uh, in like the planning stages of it because it, it was part of some trilogy that he that he was working on. But like, I don't uh, know if it's specifically oh, because it's made by men, more so it's I, made by stupid people. Yeah, but like, I, 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 I th- this is this is very much one of those movies where it's like they just did not talk to a single fucking woman in in the making of it. Uh, and I, I feel like I, I'm justified in saying that because you know. How do how do we know that this is a female empowerment movie? Is um, uh, it's the end of it. is is the end of it where they just like do a clip just show? Of, you know, yeah. <laughs> hey hey, yeah. Joan of Arc was that cool, was huh? Really weird because yeah, it's like wait wait, this was about the French Revolution. What? Well, I th- I feel like all right, I feel like if you knew a lot about the French Revolution going into it, you probably would have picked up on that. Uh, I guess maybe, maybe. I don't maybe. know because <laughs> it's it's really it's a really weird movie. Yeah, like visually. Horribly paced too. Like there were like oh yeah, that scene I, I, with I the literally or- fell asleep. Yeah. Remember that I, scene it, with the orgy, and it literally went on for like fucking like a million, like an epoch or something. I was like, I was like just <laughs> this... fucking. I was like, stop fucking. 
Just stop it. This, this yeah. was our also, childhood. There's like, there's like a bunch of uh, a bunch of scenes of just like a single image that's like slowly scrolls, and then there's like narration over like this is what happened during this time, and it's it's like just big moments happen in that interval, like a fucking war happens, and like we don't hear anything about it. It's like it's I hope it's there. Mm-hmm. It's, it's happening. Um, and then like John comes back from it and he's all like being drunk because he's sad about the war. And I want to believe I want to believe that like, you know, maybe maybe we're just not like like not getting it. You know, there's there's something about this movie that we're not getting. But I don't know. Like wait, wait. I just I think this movie is massively pretentious and completely overrated. And people who defend and people who defend it like don't. I, I don't know. If if someone if someone loves this movie, listening to this podcast, please like defend this movie in the comments. I I want to know. Think, I want to know. I think at the very least, visually, this is a very very good film. Oh yeah, I I I, I mean, I still gave it like a five or a six, just because like it's 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 a very like visually gorgeous movie. Even if it's it's just like a even if it's just like a like still like images a slideshow. Yeah, yeah. like I, well, it's like half or like a. Th- a quarter or a third, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of the only thing that recommends it is that it's it's just such kind of a out there presentation. Um, but really, the only interesting thing they did with that, you know, aesthetic choice in my recollection is that uh, uh, once she was sexually liberated, uh, she changed colors. And when other people realized that they were sexually liberated and they, you know, were, were like, you know, real boys or whatever, they also uh, gained color. But the people who were in power already at the beginning, uh, who were royalty, were in power all along. So I, I feel like that was, you know, a nice choice. And I'm sure somebody could write some dissertation on, you know, the, the meaning of that uh, artistic what choice. But like, I, I don't really care that much. But it was good, though. What color did they change? For some reason... I remember that Belladonna turns, or I mean, she's not called Belladonna, I guess, but fuck it. She turns green, or she like starts wearing green because it's the color of the devil. Is green the color of the devil? Well, it's in the movie. It says it that. is in oh, Devil okay. Man. Oh, <laughs> I guess so. Uh, it's because the grass, bro. The kids are smoking the grass. They're evil. I don't know why. I keep like trying to remember one. how how the devil looked like in this movie, and all I can think of is the, the devil CDI. looked like a penis. The well, devil looked I, like I, a little penis. I, I, all I can remember is like how the CDI Ganon looks, like, <laughs> like, like you know this one. CGI like, Ganon this is penis. this is this is the literally CGI. how I imagine him. <laughs> that, but a penis. Yeah. Perfect. You will die. Uh, John gets his hand cut off. Dude, poor John. The guy. He did literally nothing wrong. John, except, this poor except man. Except at the beginning of the movie when he strangled his wife for no reason. This poor I, I man. I don't know why he did that. Top ten cucks in fiction is like this. This guy and that dude from like the first Hulk movie who just gets absolutely cucked by the Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> he also he yeah. He, I don't know why he strangled his wife at the beginning because like she comes home crying after being raped by the king at their marriage. I think the idea and is that he's like he's like you motherfucker. You got uh your you got like the the deflowered and you know all disgusting because you slept with someone else. Now you're used goods you dumb Maybe. bitch I mean, what was he gonna fucking do i don't i don't king. know <laughs> yeah i mean that, that's called prima nocta it, it was just a horrible uh, practice and you know i guess Ugh. he gets he gets his hand cut off because of like what did he do i think like he became a debt collector and then he was like uh <laughs> the king was like give us our debt and he was like the people literally have no more money for me to get for debt I, they have no money. I can't take their money because they don't have any. I was like, fuck you. Your hand's coming off. Damn. I don't know if that was exactly it, but yeah. It was weird. And in one of these like little sequences, like these sliding sequences, he's he gets some newfound stature, which I don't I don't think it was the tax. I think that was past that part. But then he's still like drinking all the time and he's sad. I don't know because I don't know what his stature is. But whatever it is, it's not making him happy. And I don't know why. And I would like to have seen that in the movie instead of just having a narration. Your boy John didn't deserve such a fate. Sean. 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 Sean, the audio engineer. Sean McGinnis. World famous comedian, Sean, the audio engineer. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 
I, yeah, I give it like a like a five. I actually didn't rate it, uh-huh. but yeah, I liked it. No, I didn't hate it. Was, it. it. I didn't like it. It was at least really cool to look at, so I'd recommend it. Yeah, I mean, I didn't like it. I didn't partic- I didn't like dislike it though. You know, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah it's a movie. I, f- I felt the same. I gave it a four because you know I I disliked it more than I liked it, but it, it had some neat ideas. Just I didn't care, you know. Mm-hmm. That's our review. We did it. We uh, reviewed the movie. <laughs> we conquered Belladonna of Sadness. Uh, Nailed it. Okay, yeah. Let's talk about F for Fake. That was the uh, Orson Welles movie. Orson Welles who did uh, Citizen Kane, which was in like before our time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bef- before Film Slob, so it doesn't exist. <laughs> I thought F for Fake was cool. I thought Oya Cordor was hot and... Orson Welles wanted to make damn sure that we knew he was fucking her. Was he? Yes. She's she's uh, was his partner for a long time and she's the to this day the executor of his estate. Nice. So at the beginning of the movie he says that for the next hour we're going to tell like the facts and we're going to base everything on facts. We're going to be good objective boys. Mhm. Um and then it proceeds the to be f- no 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 let's it, it proceeds to be a uh discussion of uh forgery uh specifically an art forger uh, named uh elmir who was who was very famous at the time for being able to do these you know impressive perfect uh stylistic copies of various uh painters and sell them and added them to collections and you know people made lots of money off of him um it's kind of a documentary about uh elmir and the uh you know, concept of authorship. And then there was this guy who uh, wrote a biography of Elmir who lied a lot in it, in it uh, and uh, lied didn't about... actually talk to him. Yeah. Or uh, I think... Didn't they? Didn't they Did, talk? Because I, 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 thought they, I thought they appeared in the same footage, but maybe not. Um, I, I don't remember exactly. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that like, the guy that we talked about, like... Because he was... He went to some hotel in Vegas, and then like never, nobody ever sees him. Oh, you're you're thinking of uh, Howard Hughes, the Howard Hughes section, because the the same biographer wrote a thing about Howard Hughes, and it was very salacious. But it turned out that everything in that was a lie, and that he'd never met uh, Howard Hughes, and that was a big scandal. Um, but yeah, it, it, the, the whole movie, the whole movie is a meditation on what it means to be authentic, what it means to be an author, and uh, maybe maybe we can talk about that uh, before we talk about. Uh, the significance of what the hour was at the beginning i was gonna say that it was wrong because it was actually like an hour and seven minutes or something that's true so he lied in the truth section i don't know if that was an oversight or what i mean it's probably just a editing thing i guess it was like maybe and maybe we maybe we weren't meant to take it well because no, we were meant to take it literally because during like the twist at the end when he's like oh we've been lying for like 17 minutes it's like well 17 minutes ago was like an hour and 10 minutes into the movie yeah well i mean consider that it came out in 1973 so there's no reason for people to you know even keep track of that in their minds so that, that's definitely a part of it yeah i wanted to rewatch this movie like this was gonna be the first like movie that i actually like rewatched, but I didn't end up doing that because I was lazy and stuff. Had other things to do, yeah. Yeah, like jack off. True. In what is bathroom? Oh, how is Sweden? Oh, we're not there yet. Uh huh. Yeah, we're going next week. I can't believe he just put that up there. Like that, he's like, "Yep, yeah, we have a bathroom." Like, dude, that's no. I I cannot. Like, I cannot do that. Yeah, I, I don't know the context for this, but okay. That's fine. I, I don't know either. <laughs> Wait, what are we talking context about? Oh, <laughs> yeah, the bathroom. Context okay. does not matter. Anyway. Yeah, basically we're all going to be jacking off at the same time, and the only respite from this is to, is to lock yourself in the bathroom. We're all going to be jacking off in the bathroom at the same time. That too. Understood. 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 Uh, <laughs> more power to you. Um, we'll do, it's like the group piss. We'll do the group jerk off. <laughs> Okay. It'll be right. it'll be that scene from Belladonna of Sadness and go on for like five hours. <laughs> yeah. We'll put like weird filters on it to be like animated. Yes. Yeah, it'll be very artistic. It's my art that I produce every season in my factory. Is this the way that this film was like 
presented. It's like these little snippets of like there's there's shots of first of all it's very fast paced in the editing. Like it's constantly cutting between like shots of people talking and then shots of like the the camera itself or like the screen that the film's being viewed on by Orson Welles in like this studio room with all these film reels everywhere and he's talking about it and then he's in other places talking to people all over the movie and it's kind of kind of confusing a little bit first time around yeah I, i've seen it compared to uh youtube videos of all things like like this is the long uh, long predecessor of what did you and best guy ever and and that lot do and i, I could see it yeah it, it's it's very interesting presentation wise how it like skips around all these like all these different times and just all the different shots this goes like boom 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 and it's just it's, it's really yeah it's disorientating yeah and like there'll be like times where like like one of the people will say something and it'll cut to another someone else saying something that's like a continuation of that thought sort of but it's not the same scene i thought that was that was cool like the editing was was super on point and, and you know yeah. typical wells or, well atypical well style because of you know how they were splicing so much together but uh wells is very much known for his uh attention to detail in all things i did not know that but yeah editing was crazy in this movie like i this i if this movie did not win best editing i'm gonna do nothing about it i'm not sure if it was eligible to be honest really yeah why, why would it not be eligible uh i'm not sure if it had a wide release at the time but it's fucking orson welles he made citizen kane yeah but at this time in his life he was kind of exiled in in europe and not producing anything like this is his last thing before he made his uh i guess quote unquote big return as unicron in transformers the movie you know like this this is kind of swan song while he was yeah, trying I, to I do that this, is, this was his last movie yeah I'm pretty sure well uh, well last movie other than transformers and uh what was that the other side of the wind which was a big what's on the side of the wind did he direct that yes uh and it just came out like the end of last year i think oh because of a lot of issues including stuff with oya kodor uh how the fuck did orson wells get banned from europe or exiled from europe uh, exiled from hollywood he, i mean he, he was frustrated with uh the studio system and uh you know not being able to have as much creative control as he wanted to ah. that kind of thing so he went and made The Other Side of the Wind, which I still need to watch, but I hear it's kind of masturbatory, so I've just not made it very already. Like masturbating. What's the problem? <laughs> nice. Yeah, okay. I don't understand when people say a movie is masturbatory. Like, bro, we all masturbate all the time. It's not a big deal. Well, not, but that's not why I use masturbatory as kind of like a, a put down, because obviously I masturbate too, and it's not like a thing, but it, it's, what I mean by it is it's completely unproductive and only satisfies the person doing it so when you make something masturbatory it's you know not going to interest me that much because it interested you and that was the point it was interesting you here's the thing you argue you're doing doing this wrong right you say this that film is masturbatory so while you're watching it just you know take out the dick (laughs) would you would you say the wind rises is masturbatory i haven't seen it so damn it I was just curious. I was going to watch it, but so. the copy I got from the library was scratched to hell, and I was like, damn. Jesus. F for fuck. Yeah. Just to get back on topic a little bit, I thought that the meditation on what it means to be an author is interesting because, uh, you know, one of my primary interests these days is copyright theory and, and what it means to create. And I feel like all of the emph- emphasis that we put on the author of something is almost entirely irrelevant like if elmir made a painting that was good and was in the style of this person the fact that the person whose style it was in didn't make it is kind of irrelevant and uh if we you know i think the problem would be that you're selling it as if it is theirs like if you yeah but is that a problem though i mean well yeah because it's 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 a lie i mean it's not really a lie it is a lie though no you, not really because you, i mean okay yes it's, it's a theirs, it's a lie also did not draw it's it. a lie to say specifically that the person drew it um but isn't there the greater truth that it's in that style in that period of picasso's life 
And if you like that, you'll like this too. Well, sure, you can like it. They touched on that when they talked about the art industry and how it's, uh, you know, so fixated on the status of having this person's work. But, like, if you think that that's good, you're just kind of reinforcing the logic of a kind of fucked up industry. And I, I just I don't see why we should just inherently support that. Wait, wait, wait. if you think that what's good? If, if you think that uh, fixating on who made something like the, physically their hands over what the art actually means to you or, or, or what uh, period that that's trying to convey, then I feel like that's the logic of the art industry that, you know, is just all about status and not actually about the art. Uh, so why would I follow that logic if I'm not, you know, part of the insular world that is you know the art industry I, I i just i don't i don't relate to it at all uh if that makes sense I, 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 focusing I, on you mean like focusing on who made it rather than like what you feel about it yeah like or or, or like you well, know i mean i think it's it's important to like i mean if you like a painting you like a painting like i'm not arguing that it's just like if you lie say this painting was made by this person then you shouldn't be allowed to sell it yeah but if you, like you should but you if you don't say that as... but if you don't say that then people won't care because it was made in the style of this person and you know just being a copy is considered to uh be a lesser form of art and that's just not true i mean you know i don't think it's a lesser form of art. i know I, I mean you know in the art world yeah. we, we can specifically have a different feel uh, on that i mean my primary form of art these days is reading uh books for LibriVox, which are all public domain audiobooks. And so I don't do necessarily original work in that, but I, I find it extremely satisfying to uh, try and update those uh, old forms of speech to uh, be enjoyable today. So I, I have kind of a personal interest in that aspect of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just a really interesting um, exploration of a mindset that I really don't have. I mean, I used to have it because it's kind of a default, uh, but as soon as I started learning about the legal issues around, um, you know, claiming authorship, I just found it very uh, artificial. And if you're not thinking about it in terms so of what, what, in terms of what it actually what does, that? then why, why are we doing what? What is that? The thing about authorship? The value of the person who made it or physically made it being the same person who it's attributed to. Um, I mean, if that's what you're going with, I mean, some people want a Picasso made by Picasso, and if some people... Yeah, but if you, you gave a, them a, a painting that wasn't physically made by Picasso, but you said it was by Picasso, and it looks like Picasso, and it's indistinguishable from a Picasso, then they would feel exactly the same towards it as, yeah. if, as if it was a Picasso. Like, that's, that's kind of the point. Yeah. Boy, I me. sure do love Greta Van Fleet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, exactly like, uh, fucking Anthony Fantano made, you know, multiple videos about how he finds Greta Van Fleet to be this, uh, you know, rip off quote unquote of Led Zeppelin. But, you know, in those things, he's talking about how much he loves or not love isn't the right word, but how much he really enjoys, uh, Greta Van Fleet. And, you know, like the only wait, thing that, no, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. I've actually, I've, I've, I've listened, I've, I've watched a video of him specifically saying that he does not, not enjoy Greta Van Fleet because, because it's a rip too derivative. Yeah. No, I mean, but if you, if you listen to what he's actually saying, you know, that that's the point he's driving to is that he didn't enjoy it because it was, you know, quote unquote, a ripoff. You could really whittle Greta Van Fleet's pretty much their entire sound down to one band and that's led zeppelin but if you actually listen to what he's saying he's talking about how you know they make this music that sounds like led zeppelin that is a form that he enjoys i mean of course there are some elements of songwriting and musicianship where they fall painfully short but honest to god there were deep cuts on this thing that if you told me they were a long lost Led Zeppelin B-side, I might just believe you. The imitation literally goes that far. Oh, they've got these good licks, but they're the same as this thing, and, the, and you can only understand them in terms of Led Zeppelin. And I just find that, you know, so you're saying that you enjoyed this music. Sitting down and listening through to this entire album, while there are a few duds in the track list, it's actually pretty pleasant, not uh, excruciating by any stretch of the imagination. 
but that intellectually you have convinced yourself that it's bad. But instead of making something that's essentially an amalgamation of all the ideas and experiences from each respective member in Greta Van Fleet, the band has decided to base their creative output on the vision of a single music act. And again, that's Led Zeppelin. Because it reminds you of other music that you enjoy. This album just sounds like a bunch of Led Zeppelin cuts. To the point where Greta Van Fleet is a cover band, but without the covers. I, I, I just find that, uh, I find that incredibly alien. Clearly, clearly you have an X-Men superpower of being able to watch a Fantano video without zoning out the first <laughs> But, well, I do watch all of his videos. I, I mean, I watch most internet videos at double speed, so uh, I just kind of absorb it better. That helps. It does help. You should, you should try it if you don't like something him. But, but he's good to zone it out too. It depends on the video. I'm more into like, man, it's Welcome good. It's his food. best content. Oh, what am I talking about? Anthony Pantano on film club. <laughs> Anthony uh, Pantano is a treasure, all right? He, he likes movies. <laughs> he's okay. He's hit or miss. He's I guess he never missed, huh? Yeah, he can't he can deal with it. <laughs> Don't just don't say that. Either. <laughs> just don't. It's not worth it. But yeah, um, there's this uh, section at the end of Effer Fake where they talk about the uh, cathedral at Notre Dame. Uh, may it burn in peace, I suppose. Uh, about how it's this uh, authorless, beautiful thing. Hundreds of people made it over, you know, centuries, and it doesn't really matter who designed it because in the end it's beautiful and it's there and we can appreciate it forever until it burns down. And I, I just relate to that more than, you know, the status seeking uh, that, you know, any industry these days commodifying art uh, says that we should value. Because in the end, why are they saying that? Because they want to make more money and they want to convince people that authorship is like this, you know, platonic ideal uh, and it, it's, it's just really ahistorical and not my cup of tea, you know, it's, a, it's you know, I, I just don't care for it. So I, I found this very, uh, I, I found this movie very interesting from that perspective as well. I agree that we shouldn't like the whole status thing is not like they just want us money. But I mean, I still think if you're going to sell a painting, that's a ripoff and you don't tell them it's a ripoff. Well, okay. I cannot that's say that's I, a, I, I think it's a different case. I can't say that I agree with what you guys are saying if only because I zoned out for like half of that conversation. <laughs> Sorry. So. That's fair. No, I mean, no, no, it's, it, I, I tabbed over to look at memes. That's okay. How dare you? How dare you look at memes without me? Anyway, um any any other thoughts? Uh, uh, unless you want to talk about you know when they started lying, that was a neat twist. I, I did enjoy that. That was yeah, that was a neat bit at the end where like he he tells the story about yeah he has his wife in the movie and how like, she would walk past Picasso's house. Or was it Picasso? Yeah, yeah, he would walk past Picasso's house every day, and like he would be she would like be in her swim trunks and shit, and he'd be like oh yeah but, and then. <clears throat> Sorry, I have my throat's dry. It, I mean, it's just a really naked excuse for Orson Welles to film his girlfriend being, you know, hot because she's hot. And we, he wants yeah. us to know, yeah. to always remember, he tapped that ass. Which is... Uh, commendable. Admirable. Commendable, uh, yes. Yeah, commendable, yes. Uh, so she's like, she goes to into Picasso's house and like gets naked and he paints her. And then she takes the paintings... Because her, her, uh, she says that he can paint her if she gets to keep the paintings. So she takes them back to her, uh, like her grandfather or whatever, who's like this master uh, faker. And there's an art gallery where Picasso goes there. And it's like, because uh, it's like a Picasso gallery, and he goes there and he doesn't recognize any of the paintings. And it's like, oh, um, I, I, I feel like. We've uh, kind of skipped a bit Did we? Uh, because they set up this uh, Picasso gallery and the critics, the people who go there to see Picasso are like, I don't recognize any of these paintings because those paintings were made um, of Oya Kodor and were never shown to anybody because uh, Picasso gave them to her. But uh, continue. Yo, no, it was Picasso that saw the paintings and didn't recognize them as his own because the faker like made new ones and he burned the originals. I, I feel like we both, I feel like both of us have details of the other ones and have, but I know that you know these 
together aren't correct, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. I mean, in the end, there's a confrontation between Picasso and the grandfather um, that was kind of beautifully portrayed, to be honest, by Orson Welles and Oya Kodor, because they don't actually have footage of this. Uh, so yeah, they're, yeah. you know, together and they're kind of reading each other's lines uh, to to do this. And they go through this whole thing about, you know, what what does it mean for it to be a Picasso and you know the grandfather did this to pay for his medical bills and stuff so wh why can't this just be fine because you know I got uh, I saved myself by imitating you or, or by uh, showing these paintings but uh, the twist the twist of the twist is that uh, none of this ever happened and that was when Orson Welles had started lying because to us to the audience it was completely indistinguishable from everything that had been shown so far in the movie yeah uh, it was neat it was good shit it was good shit yeah. uh i mean i for one believed it because you know like why not you know famous people seem to lead interesting lives because they have the luxury to do so so why not i i believed it but i also kind of saw that like i saw the end coming as soon as like the movie even fucking started i i knew there was going to be some sort of a twist like that just based on like what the movie is like the premise of mm -hmm. it yeah, uh, I, re I read a couple things about the movie outside of this, and apparently a lot of the uh, footage is also selectively put together so that things that obviously shouldn't be together are together. So it's it's unclear how much of the uh, documentary section is actually even true yeah. because of because of that. And so, like, I, I find that whole meta commentary also super interesting. Yeah. Uh, although I don't I don't have so much to say about it. It was neat and cool. Sick. And it's a good movie. Do you guys? Yeah. Four and a half stars. Do you guys rate it? You? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah that's my nice. movie of the year. Damn. Like, I was like, you guys talking about it so in depth, depth made me want to watch it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely worth a watch. I mean, like, if you think about it like a YouTube analysis video, it, it, it fits in perfectly. Like, I, I'm not kidding. I suppose. Hmm. But yeah, it's on YouTube, so fucking go watch it. All right. Well, Terrifying High School Girls was on YouTube before we started watching it. And by the way, oh, they fucking took anyone, it down that if week. If anyone listening wants the end before I have it, just DM me on Discord or Twitter or whatever. I have it too, but do not DM me. I'll kill you. Okay. All right, so let's talk about my movie of the year. Fucking uh, American Graffiti. Really? It was cool. Sure. That was your movie yeah. of the year? I mean, uh, like, once again, I didn't have too many standouts. Like, it just barely beat out like holy mountain and like the sting like it was pretty it was pretty close but i, th I think I, pr I think i preferred american graffiti overall just because like the whole thing is oozing charm like i loved um i loved the dynamic between uh the driver guy and his like teenage sidekick thing and like they have that they have that whole thing where they start out hating each other and like they they just start getting like tons of adventures can you, and, can you give me one you know, second to get water yeah go ahead leth have you seen this movie I haven't. It's one of the few George Lucas movies I've never seen. Honestly, uh, it's weird that he's that, that uh, he's remembered for Star Wars and not this. I mean, I guess I can see why, but like, you know, yeah, one, you, one you was think... a cultural phenomenon, you know, kind of rejuvenated sci-fi and all that kind of thing. The other one was a Oscar nominated uh, for best picture movie that, you know, is also beloved, but nobody cares about because it didn't become a franchise. Only one sequel. Yeah, basically, like, y y like it's it's just weird that this movie doesn't seem to be as as remembered as as his other stuff, or his one other thing. Yeah, it's in the conversation, but like, yeah. It it really shows that George Lucas is a competent director, and people like people say he's like a fucking hack, and and he's a shitty shitty yeah, yeah. movie guy. But man, if you watch this, yeah, he's he's pretty good. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, I mean, he's more of a producer overall through his career than. Uh... A director so that that kind of feeds into that but i uh i definitely enjoy you know the original star wars the most and yeah he's he's, he's good shit and, and, and say what you want about the prequels but they they, they definitely had I like, a vision and say i like i like more so what they were going for than than what they ended up being mm -hmm. which is why which is why I like the uh the like side story stuff like all the novels and the and the games and the comic books like all that stuff for like in the set in the prequel era is fucking that's all like the best extended universe stuff uh hard disagree uh, but <laughs> i i i personally prefer it yeah uh, yeah I, I think, it, it, I think it's, like it's the, definitely the, it's definitely like, a very unique era 
the the setting of like that whole the whole prequels era is like the just so fucking cool. Uh, under you, it's completely wasted on exactly. The I, I I definitely agree because like I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be like just the Clone Wars because you know the Clone Wars was uh you know mind to hell and back like that that's very oversaturated. Uh huh. Everything before thirty two BBY is like basically blank, other than certain things like you know the Knights of the Old Republic and the comics for that and Knight Errant and uh, the Darth Bane books, uh, things like that. It's just Darth completely underutilized. Bane. Like. It, it, it goes it goes literally thousands of years before there's any Star Wars content Bane? in there. Yeah, Darth Bane. For you. Yes. Yes, and he's kind of similar, actually. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, it just... It, it, I, I've, always, I've always thought that, too. It's just, it's so fucking wasted. They just have Tales of the Jedi and Knights of the Republic and all the stuff I listed, and it's just... It's so much more interesting than the things around the movies because it, it takes star wars into like these crazy different directions with you know almost organic technology because they didn't have you know the ships yet until 19 republic and uh dawn of the jedi is about the start of the jedi so and also kind of the dawn of galactic civilization uh fucking knight errant has uh kind of a rivalry between two brothers who are Sith Lords. One of them believes that uh, he created the universe and the other one wants to fucking destroy the universe. And those are the stakes when it was canceled because it had a female protagonist, you know, it's just super you remember, interesting. You remember that fucking you, everything related to Darth Maul that's in the extended universe is so fucking funny. There was like that book where he, where he like goes to prison and like the cover is like this super edgy picture mm-hmm. of like, of him like growling and covered in chains. Yeah. It was like a, I don't yeah. remember what it was called. Anyway, yeah, imagine you're back. American g- gay. Um, America gur gur fatty. Speaking of that uh, scene or of the uh, the dynamic of the guy in the car and the girl, because I I liked that. That was my favorite parts of the movie. That, same. that girl was uh, like, I swear to fucking Christ, that girl. Like I've seen her in something, and it is killing me because I right, cannot remember. I got a. I- I gotta bring this up because I the whole fucking movie is every single person in that movie like looks like someone else that I that like I've seen but I'm I'm pretty sure they are not that guy like that dude that dude who uh raced the car guy at the end he looked I was I swear to God was that fucking um God damn it who played Han Solo Harrison Ford Yes that yeah, was, was that, that was, was Harrison that, Ford All right so yeah it, it, that was Harrison it was Ford. actually Harrison Ford Okay so I was like uh, like because everyone like I was like okay they kind of look like that guy I was like no that guy is definitely Harrison Ford but he didn't sound like him you know he Like did. Harrison Ford has like a voice he like he had like a he had like a way higher voice than normal it was weird But speaking yeah. of that girl I don't know if this is uh, this probably isn't relevant at all but I thought it was interesting cuz I went Google I went on Google to like find out who this girl was and I looked through her like IMDb and I didn't find anything that I would knew um, she was in, uh, she was in fucking, uh, Go Ask Alice, I think, which you watched, but, um... Was she? Well, I think it said so. Anyway, um, apparently her dad, before her wedding night, got her drunk and fucked her, and also got her into cocaine. Like, in real life? Yeah. Oh, no. That's terrible. That is terrible. Aw. Oh. Well, uh, that sucks, dick. And I can't do anything like about it. Like her father's dick. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> uh, 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 um, uh, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, that dude, that dude Connor, he looks exactly like Moot. Like the, the you know, Christopher <laughs> Poole. He's just, fu- he's fucking Moot. <laughs> it's, it's literally him. Well, Connor, he was the guy who didn't want to leave, right? Yeah, like he, he looks just like fucking Moot. It was crazy. He was the most... He was the best guy. I love him. Connor was okay. Uh, I was... Not really. Uh, I liked him. Uh, th- yeah. How did you feel about... Uh, I, th- here's, here was the worst fucking uh, storyline. Was that guy who like was chasing... It was chasing that girl down the whole the whole night. It was supposed to be like that... Uh, that girl, like the white the white car. Yeah. Yeah, that guy, that guy sucked. <laughs> Fuck that guy. I liked him. He was, it was I mean he was fine, but yeah, you know, like like the other parts of the movie were vastly more interesting. Like uh Yeah. Like uh Because like that girl wasn't even that hot. <laughs> uh I just I found his I found his like storyline to be kind of pointless. 
Well, well I mean, I all guess, of, all I guess, of the... I actually, I guess that is kind of the point of him because he doesn't know what he wants to do. Well, I, I feel like they all, the I feel like they all had a point in a way. Like, uh, like the whole night he spent, he spends like chasing a ghost, ba- essentially. And I, th- yeah. and I feel like maybe that woman represents like, like him, him trying to find something in that town that clearly he's never going to find in that town. Uh, yeah. Or some, yeah. something of the sort. Fucking fucks up a police car. <laughs> yeah. And then. And then they're like, bro, let's be, be in a gang. And then he's like, nah. I don't remember if he actually said no. Well, he he, they they like, say, he they, said, they tell him to make a decision. And then he was like, eh, I don't, I don't know. And they were like, eh, what are you talking about, guy? You're in the gang now. <laughs> uh, see you later. And he's like, oh, I'm, def- I'm definitely not going to see them again. So <laughs> bye. And then, yeah, and then he leaves and he sees the girl in the car. <laughs> what? <laughs> the fucking ending of this movie. When like he goes into the plane and he sees the girl. And here he sees like the car that has like yeah. the girl in it, and then it's just like cut to a screen, like a blue sky, and then like a picture of the main dude with the yellow car. And says he like he, he died in by yeah, a he drunk driver. killed by a drunk driver. <laughs> this guy went like, missing sh- in action in 1964. I was like, holy shit! <laughs> what the shit? <laughs> what dude? the fuck? Uh, and and which which is surprising. I guess I guess this was based on a true story. Uh, I guess I didn't. But they didn't say that. I mean, there I, was a second one. Was there really? There's another one called More American Graffiti. Is it which any... is the best title for a sequel ever. <laughs> Just like more of it. What's the rating? Is it any, I don't know. Is it any good? Is it didn't any... look very good. So let, me, let me look it up. I like the nerd guy when he... Um... Oh, there was a scene with him where he... Uh... Oof, the rating is like 2.7 on Letterboxd. Yeah, yeah, that's not good. So the, the nerd guy, like... He, Pulls over to this like this car place, and then like the salesman there, like, "Yo, bro, you gotta sell you this car. I want to buy your car, but I can't. But I can sell you this car for this uh, so little yeah, money." He's dude. like, "God, leave How me could... alone! What the fuck? Get out of here!" <laughs> uh, what was the point of that scene? Well, I mean, there wasn't. A, it didn't there go anywhere. Well, I mean, it, there wasn't a point to a lot of it. I mean, a lot of, I think it was. Uh, it was very much like a period piece. Like the whole the whole thing, I think, is just kind of like, yeah, this is what this is. Uh, a lot of a lot of this is what it was like, you know, and and uh, like, like and uh, what's what makes it what all makes the other the, scenes accomplish stuff and like had a point. That scene was just kind of there. I mean, a lot of the scenes existed just so they could like just have a goofy thing to happen and do, you know. And that was pretty short. Like like it, it's it's it was probably was much short. funnier. It's probably much funnier at the time to be like, Haha, remember like car salesmen? They're they're obnoxious like that. Remember that guys? Uh, which which is also. Part of what makes like this as a period piece so authentic, I think, is that it was made in the it was made in the early seventies, and this is about like the late fifties and early sixties. So you know, it's like like he was he was like there and he like lived it hard. So yeah, yeah, it was it was cool. It was like it, it felt like it, it felt like a it really made it really made me feel like a like like the fifties. <laughs> uh, the girl, the people all referred to stuff as bitchin', and I thought that was cool. Yeah. I didn't know that was a thing in the fifties. We should bring it back. I still say bitchin' sometimes. Yeah, American yeah. graffiti. It's bitchin'. Yeah, it is bitchin'. Pretty bitchin'. Uh, man, I really liked I the, uh, the subplot with the romance was kind of rushed a little bit. Oh, with like Connor and the girl. Yeah, I thought that went okay. It was because she goes at the beginning. They have uh, oh, I'm gonna go and I want to see other people. And she's acting like she's not mad, but she's totally mad. And then they go to the fucking sock hop, and it's like he wants to dance with her. And she's like, she's like, fuck off, no. And then there's like the announcer, like, oh, the prom king and queen or whatever, they're gonna dance together. And then they just sort of awkwardly stand there hugging each other, and it was like, <laughs> that's not much of a dance, bro. And you could see like other people in the back were like leaving. And they were just like arguing at each other. Yeah. And she was bringing up all this shit about how he was never very forward. Like when the first time they kissed, she had to. We basically said he was a pussy, is what she said. Yeah, basically. And it's like, oh well, this has been the case the whole time, and and then like after one little thing, when like the fucking principal comes over and he's like, oh, you're gay. I forget exactly what he said, but yeah, he said he like eat a dick or something, and she was like, ha ha ha, funny, and then they were totally fine immediately uh i don't know well I, I feel like when they were when they were having that argument while they were dancing is when like they sort of like made up but then like but then like you know like 
uh, they were having a good time for for a little bit. They were having a good time for a little bit, but then they got fucking mad at each other again, like really fucking mad. And then and then yeah. after she had maybe, that traumatic maybe it's experience, just dumb teenagers and they're emotional. Well, yeah, obviously. Uh, yeah. Late teenagers, though. It's just it seemed a bit rushed. Uh, fair enough. This whole movie, like, there's there's not a whole lot to like deep dive in this movie. I mean, maybe like the on the technical aspect, sure, but I'm, I don't really have the chops to do that. On that, like, I felt some of the shots went on too long. Oh, I I, 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 I disagree. I, I liked it. Like a lot. Like uh, the the movie was like kind of gorgeous in its own way. I really liked you know all them fifties cars, They're fucking rad. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. And the strip looked sick. Speaking, all right, this this is a small thing, but man, that girl. Um, that the nerd guy got with, like, she yeah. had really nice hair. She had cool hair. People, yeah, we need did. to bring that fucking hairstyle back. I like her. I like her a lot. Yeah, she was funny. She was just like. She was all about it, man. She was. She was just like. She was just down for some fucking adventure. She, she was down for fucking everything. Like he, after the, at the end of the movie, even when like he's like, oh, it was all a lie. I lied about everything. She's like, that was cool though, because we fucking got in a fight and it was sick. Hell yeah. Uh yeah, but there's not really much to, like deep dive in this movie. It's oh like the whole God. movie is that... just like me watching it, and then like something cool happens. I'm like, oh yay! <laughs> yeah, so like there's that scene where like this character a character comes and he's there for one scene for like five seconds and he does a thing and then he leaves, and I don't know why he did it. Wait, so what? The the uh nerd guy. Uh, what was it? What was his name? Toad. Toad. Toad goes to the liquor store to get some liquor, and he's like. Hey man, I lost my ID, and the guy's like, "Yeah, bro, I got it." And he goes in there and he just steals a fucking bottle, throws it at him, and then runs away. No, well, the and he gets shot at. The joke, the joke was that like the guy had showed up to the store to hold it up, so he just like so while he was in there, he also got that liquor. So like he was trying to rob the store. Was that? Was he? That was the implication. Was it? Uh, I don't know. I thought it was funny though. Yeah, it was. Funny. He's just like fucking peace, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. But yeah, I give it like a I gave it a strong eight. Uh, is I, uh, ton, I had it tons of charm. Seven. It's a good. It's a uh, fine. It's really just barely beats out the Sting and Holy Mountain. Honestly, like it's real neck and neck here. Like when I say it's my movie of the year, it's like don't take that too seriously. I like that scene where um, where he's like getting frustrated. Uh, the guy in the car is getting frustrated with the girl, and like his way of getting her. To tell him what where she lives is to like start hitting on her. Yeah, he's like he's like well, uh, I, I guess really, we got a knife. Fucking yeah, I really bought it too. I was like, wait, is is he serious? He's like he's like well, he like, uh, I guess if, you're, if you're, I guess if you're not gonna let me take you home, I guess like, we gotta I fuck can't now. Hold myself back you're gonna anymore. have to. We're gonna have I've to fuck. Holding myself back all night. Like I can't. Yeah, I can't believe she. Bought I, it. Like, I I thought she would have called him out. Whenever whenever people will go on about like you know how George Lucas is a fucking hack. And you know, like the, the prequels suck because George Lucas got co- full control and it. He's a fucking shitty piece of fuck. I'm gonna point to this movie and tell him, you know what? He 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 knows what he's doing. He's got it. This movie wasn't that good. I, you know, I I disagree. I, I thought it was, it was I thought okay. it was very nice. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's a a movie about some teenagers doing stuff. Yeah. Yee. Yee. Uh, Yee. <laughs> we got anything else? Um, uh, I guess I, I can just do a quick shout out for the spook who sat by the door. I don't have a whole bunch to say about it, but uh, it, I had a very good message about, uh, you know, fight the power uh, and uh, looked at that idea from a lot of really interesting uh, black angles that I uh, related to because he's a uh, uh, he becomes a CIA agent and uh, does the best, but uh, they, you know, discriminate against him by putting him in the copy room. So he's like, "Fuck that! I'm gonna go make a domestic terrorism cell to get some changes out there for my black brothers and sisters." And I'm like, "Yes, okay, give it to me, Daddy." <laughs> uh, it was good, and uh, I especially really liked the part because I'm biracial, uh, and there was a part with a uh, a biracial guy who passes for white, like I do. And uh, he was very emotional about that, and like I, I felt that, I felt that right here in my stomach, man, my Check my heart. It's good shit. Yeah, it was it was good. Check your fucking. Privilege. But uh, I don't have much to say about it. 
Dude, I was, so this is completely unrelated, just related to privilege, but, like, I was at the, uh, I live in, like, a military town, and we have, like, this, uh, like, a grocery store on the military base, and so they, the, we go there for shopping. I don't usually go, but, like, my mom goes, but I was there this weekend, and my dad's, like, doing the self-checkout, and the robot says, please scan your military ID card or privilege card. Oh, shit. They're giving out the white privilege cards now? Yeah, is that, so is that the inward in pass? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, there are literally privilege cards in real life. Oh, no. I, I wish I could have one. I, I want to get into the military just so I can sell it. I have a privilege card. If only Shaft were here. Discounts on groceries. Anything else, guys? Uh, No. It is midnight 30. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, good show, guys. This uh, was a good year. Yeah, it was a nice... Not as good as the year with French Connection, though. Holy shit, that was a good one. Yeah, uh, it was a good one. Um, I don't know. I, I, I was Towards the end, uh, I was looking towards, like, what's next year. And, like, Zardoz is there. Uh, fuck, I was, start, I was starting to make the uh, list, but I don't have it up. Uh, uh, Godfather 2 is that year. Um... The the black Godfather is that year. Black try black. The black Godfather. The black Godfather. The black Godfather. <laughs> that's okay, that's the thing. Okay. That. <laughs> Blazing Saddles. So I I, uh, I, I think I think next year will be pretty cool too. So yeah, more film slabs coming. Coming guys. Yeah. Coming y'all. Forever. Uh, just not for a while. Next month, or actually no, this month, me. And Tang are both going to be in a different country. We're on a Sweden. Like, yeah, we're going to be gone. So there's going to be no, there'll be nothing. But like when I get home, uh, I will edit both uh, this episode and the last episode and they'll both be out. I mean, I should probably just, I'll probably edit episode three before I leave. I mean, you can pass it to uh, me if you want for this episode. And I can, just don't I even can do it. This. Episode three. I, all right, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna. I'm gonna on air. I'm gonna. I'm gonna admit to everyone. Episode three sucked shit, and I hated it. Uh, I, I did. We, nobody. I did not do a good job. <laughs> well, we have to put it out anyway. Yeah, yeah it's, it's part of the history. The film slots. Yeah, it's, all right, it's fine. It's we're fine. we're, get, we're yeah. getting our dynamic together. I, I, yeah. I think this one. I think we're this one gelled a little bit better. Yeah, we're definitely. We're definitely getting it down. Uh, okay, yeah. If you want to edit this episode, that's that's cool. Buff out the scratches. It'll cut it down. I mean, I, I have other uh, audio projects uh, going on right now too. Like, I just, I yeah, just finished just... my section of the Mueller report and everything. Anyway, whatever. This isn't just this isn't stuff for our audience. Fuck that. Uh, I, yeah, I'm not sure how to sign you. off though. How are we gonna sign off? How are we gonna sign this off, boys? What with like with a pen, right? Yes. That's how you sign. Just put yes. like a my pen. I'm putting a pen. Just put put a. You will. Die. And that's the end. Hello, this is Mr. Tangelo. I'm here to turn my audio back on and mention Crazy Train. I'm going off the rails!